Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is your review for England versus Wales, or Wales versus England, that was the official listing, and the other games that took place today, but it finishes Wales nil, England 3, I'm about to give you a breakdown, before we do, I want to let you know this video is brought to you and sponsored by none other than the One Football app. Get the One Football app, link in the description for all of your footballing latest, all the latest happening at the 2022 World Cup, all your latest news, your information, your statistics, your results, your results, your uh, fit, your fixtures, standings, stats, whatever you need, it's there in the One Football app. And as well as that, after the World Cup is ended and we return back to our domestic leagues, you can find all the latest information for the Premier League and all that there. If you are based in the UK and Ireland, you do have access to one Italian Serie A match per match day to watch on the One Football app, as well as Italian Serie A highlights. So make sure you download the One Football app, link in the description, hit that now and enjoy. Let's get cracking. First game I'm going to talk about, have to, is Wales versus England. Wales nil, England free, England top the group. And um, I have to say, uh, this uh, this game wasn't a game I was overly impressed with. Um, the first half was, was flat. The second half was exactly what I expect from this England team, um, you know, from the get-go. Well, why it took us until the second half to be able to start playing like that, I don't know. Maybe it's because Gareth Bell came off, who knows. But first half was very flat. We weren't moving as much. We were slow. We were static. A um, couple of opportunities. Kane into Rashford, for example. And Rashford tries to... I don't know what he tried to do there. But he sold himself completely. He, was, he blatantly put himself into a position for the goalkeeper to figure out exactly where he was going to place the ball. All the goalkeeper had to do was move to one side. Um, if he had used his loaf, maybe he would have cut in and gone around the keeper. But he made amends later on. The first half, as I said, apart from that, not really much action. It was kind of going back all the time. Harry Maguire having a lot of touches. The highlight of the first half, I have to say, was Harry Maguire. Fair play to Harry Maguire for taking the ball from near enough the halfway line up until the edge of the box and then having a shot and being the only man on the planet to actually know what he was trying to do with that shot. <laughs> because it went out for a throw <laughs> and I think everyone's confused was that a shot or was that a cross he hit it like a shot it looked like a cross it ends up going out for a throw no one knows for sure except Harry Maguire and that's why we love Harry Maguire ladies and gentlemen because he is other uh, uh, he's, he's like folklore with Harry Maguire you just don't know what's going on <laughs> so honestly jokes aside um, that first half, that was basically the highlight of it. We move into the second half and it starts to click. It starts to click, finally. Now, the team that Gareth Southgate went with, I have to say, on the basis of how we performed against the United States, I can't criticise Gareth Southgate too much in terms of his lineup because I thought it was good enough change for us to move into this game. We went with Carl Walker right back, who came back, and fair play. Luke Shaw, Stones, and Maguire. Then a the midfield three of Henderson, Bellingham, and Declan Rice. However, it did seem like it was Declan Rice and Henderson in the double pivot, and Bellingham just ahead of him in a 10, if you want to say that. And then the three of Foden, Rashford, and Harry Kane. That is, for me, I, I'll take it. It's good enough. There's no Mason Mount. There was no Sterling. The um the, the players where it was looking like it really wasn't working in previous in the previous match, you could see the changes there. So you know what? I'll well, take it. We'll take it. But with that team, especially looking at Foden, we expected Foden to deliver, hoping Rashford delivers, and then we did. Move into the second half, we get a free kick on the edge of the box. Rashford, great shot. Not taking anything away from Rashford, that was a brilliant shot into the. The far corner. But the goalkeeper, don't know what he was trying to do here. Don't know what he's trying to do. You've got the, the wall covering one side of the goal and him covering the other. He takes two steps to his right to then dive completely to his left. When you can see your wall is covering you there. Don't try and take an advantage if you've got the wall there. You know, don't move. Keep your position. The moment he's about to take the free kick, pick a side if you're having to pick a side. He took two steps. And then tried to dive. He didn't reach it. He wasn't reaching it. Rashford, a lot of power. Great precision. Beautiful free kick. 1-0 England. And then that's it. We just needed that. We needed that first goal and then everything let loose. We move on one minute later. 
beautiful, well, pass into Harry Kane. Harry Kane takes it on the right-hand side. I have to say, beautiful ball across the box by Harry Kane because it almost looked like he didn't even see that Foden was running in. It's almost like he didn't comp he didn't clock that, you know, to be able to make that pass, it would it had to go down one certain gap. If it had moved either side of that gap, it would have been blocked by a defender or blocked by the goalkeeper. It was perfect, inch perfect, straight to Foden, gets on the end of it, taps it in, and Foden gets his goal. So the man that people have been screaming out for gets a goal, and the other guy that comes on in place of the ones that didn't play, including Saka, Saka was rested, gets a goal. So fair play Gareth Southgate on that front, and the fans have been corrected. Well, not corrected, the fans have been proved correct. So there's that. And then later on, Rashford with another one, just to wrap it up. Great piece of individual skill in the box to get around the defender, slot it in, bottom corner, and it's 3-0 England. And that was it. After, after that, we managed to make some subs. We brought off Harry Kane, for example. We brought off uh, lads that we know are going to be used, managed to bring on Wilson, managed to bring on Phillips. Really, really good. Really, really good timing of the substitutions in order to prepare us for the last 16. And we get a good result against Wales and Wales are sent packing home. So Wales, unlucky. Um, and that's the end of Gareth Bell and his international career. He came off at halftime, I suspect, with an injury. So he only had seven touches on the ball as well, which is quite sad. But um, his international career is now basically over. With his last World Cup for sure. Um, his only World Cup. So look, great career. Wales, best of luck. And um, yeah, they go home. Meanwhile, England keep the party going. So I'll get to the last 16 shortly after I talk about the next game, which is Iran versus the United States of America. And this was, uh, I was almost right. I was almost right. I said 1-1. One, one. Iran nearly made it 1-1. One, one. <laughs> but the USA win 1-0, courtesy of Christian Pulisic and fair play to Christian Pulisic as well um, but putting his body on the line during that game let's be real he had a collision with the goalkeeper um, in the break of 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 having that having that goal and um, absolute chaos but he's okay thank god he's okay he gets the winner Iran though the second half I felt like in the first half Iran could have done more could have done more to impose themselves. They kind of let the United States have a lot of the ball and they were kind of just sitting back. I, I, I'm guessing they were just trying to get the nil-nil because they knew a draw would have got them through. As soon as you want the United States score, that's it. Iran have to come out. And that's where they looked like they were at their best. That Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to take the advice of Pele into account. The best way to defend is to attack. You know, the best way to protect yourself is to keep them held back by attacking not to say come on give us your best shot and then take all the hits and don't go down depends if you've got a chin if you haven't got a chin buddy you're going down <laughs> so Iran they they showed their best towards the end and I think it was too little too late there was a couple of VAR calls didn't go to VAR rightfully so if I'm honest I was screaming going it was VAR VAR and I look at the replay and I'm like no it's not it's not it's not so um yeah at the end of the day, Iran, very unlucky. Very unlucky. They were in a position today that no one expected them to be in. And the USA only just narrowly beat them 1-0. So very, very tight. Iran can leave this competition with their heads held high. They won a game. They finished on three points out of a possible nine, of course. Um, lost two and won one. Took the USA to the final minute of that game. And yeah, no one expected them to. If anything, they everyone expected them to finish last. So Iran, well done. Best of luck. Good luck for the future. And it's England and the United States that will be going through. And they will be playing who I'm going to review now. In Group A, we've had Qatar lose 2-0 to the Netherlands. Um, and this was expected. Qatar, I think, are the worst performing team in this competition, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so, um, which is actually quite mental, considering they're the hosts. But the Netherlands, Gakpo again. Gakpo cannot stop scoring. And another great goal from Gakpo. Right now, I think he's on course. If the Netherlands do stick around until the quarterfinals, at least maybe he might get the golden boot if he if he keeps if he keeps up with this form. So um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Later on, um, De Jong with the tap in, and it's two 0 to the Netherlands. Qatar, as I've said, very under underwhelming, and it's the Netherlands that have topped the group. But in the other game, where as a Chelsea fan, I have to say I'm very happy here. Koulibaly, 
Koulibaly getting the winner for Senegal. And Senegal are the first African country to make it into the last 16 this competition. There is still the chance of Ghana making it. Um, we'll find that out soon. And um, yeah, Morocco as well. They're on course to making it. Tunisia, maybe not. <laughs> Cameroon, maybe not. So um, we'll see. But Senegal, first ones, and congrats. They absolutely deserve it. I'm so happy for them. Senegal with the penalty on the 44th minute. Ismaili Saar tapping it. He, he won the penalty. And it was a penalty. He managed to tap the ball away from the defender. Got chopped. Penalty. He slots it in 1-0. Later on, Cas um, Casiedo scores what was a ball in from the box. And he taps it in at the far post. No one marking him whatsoever. But... Senegal are like, yeah, don't worry, it's fine. We'll rectify that very shortly. Give us three minutes. Three minutes later, that's exactly what happened. Ball across the box. Koulibaly comes out of nowhere on the right-hand side, smashes it in to the left-hand side of the net, runs off in celebration, and Senegal hold on to it, bringing my prediction into life. I did say 2-1 to Senegal. It finished 2-1 Senegal, and Senegal are in the last 16. So, now we look at the last 16, and how is it? going to be played out the last 16 consists of England versus Senegal this is going to be an interesting game also the Netherlands versus the United States of America that's going to be an interesting one too I'll give you my predictions when the time comes but England Senegal yeah I can already already see a lot of people are going to be expecting England to walk across Senegal like it's nothing be prepared that's all I want to say. Be prepared. Be prepared. Because the way that England have performed in the group, Senegal might have something to say about that. I'm just being, I'm being honest. They might have something to say about that. England have to take them seriously. So we'll get to that when the time comes. But that's your review for today. Congrats to Senegal. Congrats to Netherlands. Congrats to England. And congrats to the USA. All made it into the last 16. Let me know your thoughts down below in terms of how you saw it and how it all went down in your eyes. Much appreciated. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one. I'll see you then. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, people, in a bit. Take care and peace.